All right, everyone. So once again, today we have a huge momentum stock. The stock for today's case study is currently up 415% and it's off its highs. All right, so two days in a row, some big percentage gainers. Now, I hope you watched yesterday's case study so you were able to apply some of what we learned from yesterday's big move to today's opportunity. But if not, then let's study up here today and let's jump into the case study of AVTX. Okay, so AVTX um, was today's uh, big momentum stock. I'm just go full screen on this so you can see it well. And I found it off the uh, top gainers scanner. So this morning, I woke up a little early. It was around 6, and I just couldn't fall back asleep. So I, I pulled up my phone, and I checked the scans on my phone. And I saw at the time that um, AVTX was up around 274%. So I was like, oh sweet like the holy smokes that's that's a pretty solid gapper and i noticed there's a couple different things i noticed so number one of course i noticed um the percentage gap that it was up a, a lot it was a big gapper i noticed the price you know 24 dollars here at this time the volume and i noticed the float the number of shares available to trade is less than a million so i was like wow all right this this looks interesting. Uh, my biggest fear was that I was going to check the news and see that it was a buyout. Because sometimes you have stocks that, you know, get bought out, the, the price shoots up, and then what happens is they just trade sideways. Now, some people don't really understand that. They, they're kind of like, well, I don't get it. What, wouldn't we want to trade, you know, a, a buyout? Well, you know, this isn't that, isn't that good news? Um, but let me kind of just show you what's going on here when we have a buyout. All right, so when you have a company that's been bought out, and, and we you know we see this all the time, what ends up happening is if the stock was previously trading at you know let's just say six dollars a share here, you know six dollars a share here more or less six dollars a share, then we get the news that they've been bought out for eighteen dollars a share. The price is going to squeeze up, and so you'd be like, oh, I, I should trade this move. But what happens is the second, and I mean the second the news comes out of the buyout at 18 the price goes right to 18. and this kind of shows how sophisticated the algorithms are in the market because the the market makers immediately know the value of the company is no longer six dollars a share it's now 18. so if you were incredibly fast maybe on a rare opportunity you'd be able to buy like halfway up here into the spike but you would have to be incredibly fast. It would be very rare. And then from that point forward, the stock's going to trade at $18 because that's the that's the value of the company. There's no more speculating about, about what it might be worth later at a future date. This is the value that's been bought out. The only time it's going to change is if, um, you know, Department of Justice or whatever, one of the regulators decide to investigate the buyout and maybe block it, like we saw with Spirit Airlines. So you could have a drop there. That could happen. Or... If um, on the rare case, uh, another company comes in and makes a, a a higher offer and there's a bidding war, but that's that's pretty rare as well. So generally speaking, uh, when we have a buyout, it's going to be a no trade. So on ABTX, uh, the next thing I did was I was I got to check the news. So I checked the news and I was like, oh, I saw the word acquires. I was like, oh, OK, this is probably an acquisition. Um, but... Um, it's not. It's AVLO, uh, or sorry, sorry, ABTX, Avalo Therapeutics reported after yesterday's market closed that it acquired another company, Al, um, Almata Bio. All right. Um, and it's phase two ready, anti IL, da, da da da. So I was like, all right. So this is interesting. So the news is that this company acquired another company of course they would only do that if they thought that that was going to help them make more money and be more successful and the market responded very favorably so after hours so so first of all we'll pull up the chart and look at the after hours for a second um so after hours abtx we'll pull this up here um squeezes up and i i you know that's awesome. Good job for anyone who was hanging out after hours. That was pretty sweet. This thing goes from four dollars, and this was at um, let's see, six o'clock. No, four sixteen. So yeah, six four o'clock. Um, sorry, I'm turned around. 
So this is at four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, news comes out and it just shoots right up here from four up to 18. It pulls back, pops up higher. So most likely, it looks like we had a micro pullback right here around 10. And we had some more micro pullbacks in this area. And then we had a proper pullback right here, a, a high, but it wasn't able to hold that level. It came back down, it double bottomed, and then you had another move here up higher uh, as we went towards uh, 6 p.m. Ended up hitting a high of about $24.25 a share. And that marked the after hours high. Pre-market begins at 4 a.m. European traders, U.S. traders who can't sleep up early. Uh, it starts to rally here. And as you can see, at about 8 a.m., it hits a high of just under $24. I, um, before we look at my individual trades, after I identified the catalyst and I sat down on my chart, I sat down on my computer and pulled up the chart, I looked at the daily chart. Now, on my phone, I checked the intraday chart first. I was like, what's the intraday chart look like? Is it even interesting? And when I saw that it was interesting, then I came over to my computer, sat down, and started looking at the daily chart. On the daily chart, I identified um, a couple of interesting things. So to break down the anatomy of this daily chart, number one, this is a stock that has been beaten up for a long time. So number one, it's a beaten up uh, daily chart. So that's a chart that's been selling off for a long time. You can see that very clearly. The stock has been selling off for a long time. Um, secondly, we have uh, this S right here, which means there was a reverse split. Uh, that was probably in about January uh, of this year. So reverse split, you know, approximately three months ago. So somewhat recent, not super, super recent, but somewhat recent. So reverse split. All right. And then um, I noticed the position of the 200 moving average. The 200 moving average is at $160 a share. It is so far away because of this huge gap down that occurred right here and then the subsequent reverse split. So 200 moving average, long ways away. 200 EMA, uh, far away. Now the 200 EMA is a very well-respected level of resistance. So if a stock is right under the 200, it's going to hit its head on that level. It's probably not going to break it. So if I'd seen the 200 was right there, I'd be like, if, if it's at 25, I would say, well, it's probably not going to go that much higher. Now, if there was ever a day a stock could break the 200, it's a day that it has strong news. But if it's already up two, three, four, five hundred percent as it comes into that level, it's probably not going to break. Okay, so then I pull up my intraday charts uh, and start to get dialed in on actually looking for an entry. This is a 10 second chart, but we're going to switch over to um, the day trade dash uh, platform here and I'll get more dialed in. Okay, so. Pulling up the 10 second chart this morning, um, I sat down, uh, it was right around 7 a.m. It was it was early. Um, and the last week or so, I haven't really had a lot of trades early. It's been a little slower. So I was kind of like, oh, I don't know, but you know, let's see. And so what I noticed on this, so a couple of things. Uh, I'm gonna draw a trend line here. Oops, I gotta turn this off for a second. So. I noticed um, this high back here of approximately, whatever that is, um, 23.80. And I noticed this high up here where it broke it, which is just over 24. Um, so, and then that high right there. So I was like, okay, we, we had some resistance around $24 a share, more or less. It pulled back and it's been under the volume weight average price. And then I took my ascending resistance line and I was like, is there, is there something that I could draw in this area here? And I connected uh, this level here, this high. I want to connect the actual high to this level here. So I thought, all right, well, it looks like it's kind of, the price has kind of gotten above this resistance line right here. Um, that's fine. So then I drew an ascending support line right about here. So I was like, okay, we've got a, a little bit of ascending support in this area. Um, and as it started to pull away right here, as it started to move up, I, I took a starter. And we had this candle and I bought 1,000 shares at $18.22. And 
That was my first entry. It was a pretty nice entry. It was it was pretty a pretty solid entry right around VWAP support. And then we pulled away here up to 19, up to a high of 20. It then squeezes here up to a high of $22 a share. And I locked up 3000 bucks in the first, you know, it was five minutes of my trading, more or less. So solid trade right there. I was very happy with that. Um, and now let's switch to the one minute chart. So I was showing you the 10 second chart because it's easier to get dialed in on the entries. If you look at the, um, the five minute chart, you could see this is where I was buying right here just after 7 a.m. Um, we got this push higher. We sold off. We came up. And then on this candle, we had this sort of big spike right here. Okay, so my next trades on it. Um, I want to see. I had a loss on it. And I want to see if I can find that loss. Um, where was it? 22. Let me... Um, let's see, where was that loss? I'm having a hard time remembering where that was. Um, there it is. Okay. Uh, 8.26 AM. Okay. So 8.26 AM. Yeah, it was right here. So on this one, I... We got this push higher right here and it hits a high of 2350 and then it dips down i added at 23 as it's oh let me show you on you'll this will be easier for you to see on the 10 second chart um this was really kind of disappointing so right here we were consolidating under 2350 I added a thousand shares at 23 as we were coming up. And then I added another 2000 shares for the break of 2350 because I thought we were doing a little flat top breakout. And then all of a sudden it drops all the way down to 2275. And I stopped out 2250. Thank goodness I stopped out there. But I still ended up losing 2000, almost $3,000 on that trade. So I hit a high of being up 7000 today. And unfortunately, I gave back a good chunk of it. Uh, something that I, some, someone asked me yesterday in the comments, they said, Ross, wait, I don't understand. You hit your daily goal yesterday of $5,000, but you didn't stop. And of course, I finished yesterday only at about 1200 And I said, well, I know the thing for me is that I've never stopped when I hit my daily goal. My daily goal is kind of a target. It's a little optimistic. I set it at 5000 which is perhaps a little high. But that's been, for a while, kind of my goal. I've thought about bringing it down a little bit to something maybe a little bit more modest. But in any case, $5,000 has been the goal for a long time. And uh, for me, a, a solid day, I hit 5000 pretty quickly, as I did today. And if I stopped right there, I would be leaving so much money on the table. Because the fact is, my top... 20 days each year, those are those are days where I'm up 15, 20, $25,000. So you add up all of those days, you're talking about well over $100,000, over $200,000 of profit. And if on those top 20 days, I stopped at just $5,000, I'd be leaving a lot of money on the table. So it's also true that there are going to be days where I hit 5,000, I keep trading and I give some back. And so at the end of the day, Am I net coming ahead by continuing to trade after crossing the goal? And I believe the answer is yes, because in a hot market, I can stack up profits so quickly. It's incredible. In a colder market, I'm more likely to get chopped up a little bit. But something that I also have trained myself to do is when I hit my daily goal in like three trades, like I did today, I start to size up. I get more aggressive. I have a cushion. I can afford to take some risk. The market is clearly rewarding me. And I step up to the plate. And that's how I go from up five to up 10, 15, 20,000 really quickly. So for me, it's kind of like um, on the days when things are working, my equity curve sort of goes like this. Um, but what will sometimes happen is I'll start to pull away like that. And then I step up for that, you know, trade that's going to send me here and I drop back down. So I get kind of like a false start. And that's what happened yesterday. And it actually happened again today. So I'm like kind of dialed in. I'm like, okay, here we go. Getting some momentum and then false start. But 
there's enough times where I step up to the plate like this and send it like that that it makes up for these false starts. Now, the most important thing ideally is that I'm at least walking away green. I'm at least walking away with some profit to show for the day, which I was yesterday and I am again today. So as long as I've got a little something to show for it, then I've got more money in my pocket than I had at the beginning of the day. And I had the potential to turn this into a $10,000, $15,000 green day had things just been a little bit different. So if this had broken $23.50 with 3,000 shares, we're looking at $23.75, $24, $24.50, and another $3,000 winner, right? Anyways, so that was my loss on um, ABTX, which was a real shame. Now, following that loss, uh, I then had another loss. But but first, let's just pull my uh, slides up for one second. So... So let's get let's let's rewind for just a second. Um, so on ABTX, uh, there were a couple of really good setups. Um, this break right here of twenty two was super solid. Um, this pullback right here, that first pullback was really clean. This one was not as easy because it had topping tail and it dipped way down before springing back up. I and then kind of double topped up there. That wasn't easy. This stalled out went lower, came back, but then once it was back into the strength, this was a good setup. But then unfortunately, it rejected on pretty high volume. It sold off at the open, popped, dropped, popped, dropped, halted down, came back up, wasn't easy to trade. I did get back in, uh, I think it was on this pullback here. I, I got a small win on it. Uh, but I just, I, I started feeling a little gun shy because I'd given back a little too much profit on some of my earlier trades. And I just, the problem on this really was that the spreads were very large. So we had large spreads, 50, 70 cents at times. And I just started to feel like I cannot pull the trigger here. I just can't do it. So in total on, um, ABTX, I'm walking away with $2,777 and 57 cents. That's not bad. That's not bad. I mean, look, is it a home run? No. W was it potentially looking like it was going to be a home run? It was. But, you know, from the range that I started trading it, you know, it, it kind of went up and then had some rejection stalled out, came a little higher, but it just wasn't super, super clean. The cleanest move was back here when the news first came out. And that's when I love to be trading. I love to be trading on the breaking news. It just happened that this news was after hours, so I missed it. Okay, so so that's the um, so that's the breakdown of ABTX. Now we can look at the couple um, other stocks that I traded today. So ABTX was the first one. XLO is an interesting one. Um, XLO, this one had news. It was halted and it resumed trading at seven thirty five, and it instantly spiked. A, a really clean breaking news spike from about $1.60 where it opened all the way up to $3. So this one was yesterday uh, at 60 cents. And then this morning, they've got news that comes out. They halted the stock, and then it was resuming at 7.35. So, and I want to thank um, SM, one of our members who mentioned this to me, because I wouldn't have seen it otherwise, because I'm not usually looking at stocks that are currently halted. I'm looking at stocks that actually have news. So anyways, he, he mentioned, hey, this one's resuming at 8, uh, 7.35. I pulled it up. Uh, it resumed. I jumped in at $1.66 and $1.67, and it squeezes up to $3.20. Boom. Almost 100% return instantly. But I didn't take a big position, only uh, maybe 2,000 shares, and I took profit as it was going higher. So locked up 1100 on that and didn't get back in. It ended up just kind of selling off. I saw some people trading it more than me, but... I just left it alone after that. Um, CZOO, this one was difficult yesterday, and it was difficult again today. I, I just, I don't really know what to say about it. It was just a difficult stock to trade. So this morning, um, let's see. So after hours, it squeezed up here to a high of 20. Pre-market, it starts squeezing, and I got in as it broke this blue descending resistance line right here. And... It, I, I was thinking we were going to be making new highs, but it only went a little bit higher than yesterday's high, and then it stalled out and completely reversed. Came all the way back down to this level. At the open, it sold off. It came back up, as you can see. And I took a trade um, after the open right here, thinking we were going to break through these highs. And I got in at 
$19.69 for the break of 20. We had ended up double topping at 20, reversing. It drops to 17, and I lost 4,000 on that. So I went from green on it to red. And at that point, I was like, all right, you know what? This isn't looking so great. Um, I did get, uh, one, I think, one more, a couple more trades on ABTX after that, which helped recoup some of the loss. And then my last trade was on GCTS, which I only bought 250 shares of GCTS, but I still managed to lose 600 bucks on it. Um, it started just kind of grinding higher here. And I was thinking that maybe there was a short trying to cover and unable to cover because it was just like straight buying. So I got in, um, I took a dip at 47, but then it dipped all the way down to 40 bucks. It dropped like seven points. So it bounced up for a second and I, I got out. But yeah, that was a little messy. I, I, I mean, I would still say that GCT looks interesting. GCTS looks interesting if it can get over $50 a share, but I don't know if it'll be able to. Um, BCG was another stock on the scans this morning. I thought this looked like a little bit similar to D, uh, sorry, GCTS yesterday in that it had a big move pre-market. And I was thinking, oh, maybe this will curl up like GCTS did. But no, it never did. Um, LPA, IPO today. This one um, this goes up from 12 to 30, but back down at 18 now, coming back down. So. A couple traders looking at I, BIO, lower price stock, but it's been grinding higher for a couple days. So it's very thickly traded. Not really my cup of tea. So anyways, this week is kind of a wash. I was red on Monday. I was red again on Tuesday. And then green on Thursday and Friday, or sorry, Wednesday and Thursday. You know, yeah, as it turns out, it would I should have walked away yesterday when I was up five grand. As it turns out I should have walked away today when I was up five grand. But I, I finally felt like, all right, I'm getting some momentum here. Let's lean in. And then it just stalled out. So um, a little discouraging, but, you know, it's just the way it is. So um, something that I was noticing, though, um, let's see if we look at. Um, let's see price yeah oh so i want to look at just um march the month of march so i i noticed sort of an interesting pattern here uh, this doesn't include today's profit but um so this is sort of interesting for the month of march um if i looked at these metrics for a student i would tell them to stop trading stocks over ten dollars right i'd be like the, your metrics are telling a story and it's not very hard to interpret what it means you lose money when you trade stocks over 20. Now that's not true for me in total. Like that's not true. That wasn't true in the month of February. Um, but I didn't make a lot on these higher price stocks in the month of February. I still mostly was trading in this five to 10 range. Well, two to 10 range. And it's interesting that that's where I seem to be sort of doing the best, right? It's in this range of two, two to 10. Uh, I generally say I do well on stocks under 20, but what happened this month um, on an, on several occasions were trades where, and my biggest loss of the month was on, was in this price range. So it's, it does draw down the whole average because of one mistake. But what happened on that one mistake was I jumped in a stock that had breaking news and it went from 12 to 14 to 16. And I added at 16, thinking it was going to go 17 to 18, and then it drops all the way back down to 11 bucks. And I lost like five points. So, you know, it was really unreal. But um, I, that could have happened at any price range, I suppose. But something I definitely struggled with, and it was noticeable on ABTX today. It was noticeable on GCTS yesterday, uh, CZOO both days. These stocks with bigger spreads have been really tough. You know, it's just... I mean, I'll show you the spread. I mean, this is a two-point spread on LPA right now. GCTS has a 60 cent spread, 70, nearly 70 cent spread, right? CZOO, this one's got 20 cent spread. And the problem is you buy for the breakout, at, you know, so you're in on the on the ask, you're instantly down 17 cents, and then it stalls out, and then all of a sudden it's down at 1340 and you're down 60 cents a share or whatever it is, 80 cents a share. And it happens so fast. So I haven't 
you know, again, this is just one month of data. So it, it's not like a reflection of my trading at large or, you know, whatever in, in total, but it's good to make those observations to then make plans for the month ahead. So I feel like my my equity curve for the month of um, March is kind of sad because I made about 30,000 here in the first week or so of the month. And then I gave it all back in the second week. And then I rallied back up about, you know, 15,000 or so. And then this week I gave back about 6,000 of it on Monday and Tuesday. So, you know, now I've had a green day on Wednesday and Thursday, but they're small green days. So I, I'm kind of, well, this might not, maybe I, I think, I think I made back a little bit more than this, but, um, you know, so for the whole month of March, I don't really have a lot of profit to show for it. I think I've got, maybe I've got a bit more than that. We can, we can check, but, um, let's see, what is it at? Well, 18,000. All right. So it's not the end of the world, but, but it's still, it's still not where I should be. It's not where I'd like it to be. And I have this negative profit loss ratio, $700 winners versus $1,100 losers, right? I have a $20,000 loss this month. This is not great. And of course, you know, fees and commissions. So, so I'm kind of in a little bit of, I guess you could say it's an ABCD pattern with the equity curve, a drawdown, back up, and then kind of back here right now. So uh, obviously, I need and want and need to make this move here. And so the question now is sort of like, okay, well, how do I proceed for the month of April? Given 18,000 divided by, you know, 20 trading days, I'm only only averaged about $1,000 a day last month, this month of March, my daily goal is 5,000. But after a couple of big losses, well, my average was drawn down all the way to a thousand. So, you know, for, so for April, should I set my daily goal just at a thousand dollars a day? Right. I mean, I would, if I did that every day, that would be pretty consistent. It seems very low, 2000 a day, 2,500. You know, the fact is what I set the goal at is, is somewhat irrelevant because if I see good opportunities, I'm going to keep trading. I'm going to continue to be aggressive. But I think the bigger issue is on the drawdown side of things. So with some of these higher price stocks, I, you know, I was trading four, six, eight thousand shares, ten thousand shares. And all of a sudden a one point drop, I'm down 10 grand. Right. Now I could cap my share size at 5,000 shares for the next two weeks. I, I don't like doing that because I feel like if I do that, I'm going to also miss opportunities and 5,000 shares of a $20 stock is very different from 5,000 shares of a $2 stock. So, you know, it gets into this sort of situation of sometimes it's hard to know the best guardrails to apply to your account to keep you safe, but also not to hold you back too much. Because if you put on too many guardrails, too many restrictions, then you're going to miss opportunities and then you're going to get FOMO and frustration because of that alone. And then that becomes its own source of, um, you know, emotional hijack potentially. Now you're really self-inflicting these wounds. So I haven't made any, you know, final decisions for my plans for the month of April, but I'd like April to be a better month than March was. And realistically, I took, I had too many, um, I just had too many big losses um, in, right? So that's, I didn't even have to draw it on the whiteboard. That's what it looks like. Um, you know, I, ha I had a, a few too many big losses. <sighs> so I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not really sure what the answer is, but um, it's something I'm thinking about and I've got to try to, you know, make some good decisions for uh, the coming, uh, you know, for Monday, starting on Monday. Again, you know, life is good. I count it $187,000 in profit on the year. I started the year with a, about 100000 in my account. So my account's uh, more than doubled. It's up to close to 300000 now. I could take some money out of my account as well and not allow myself to even have the ability to buy 
5,000 shares of something like ABTX. Because right now it doesn't feel like it's um, really benefiting me to be trading that kind of size. But uh, I don't know. I got to think about it a little bit. And in any case, Monday, it'll be the beginning of a new week, beginning of a new month. And um, so I'm thinking just got to start a little bit slow, build a little bit of a cushion on the month, see if I can get myself into the driver's seat. So I think probably the right move is to keep my share size cap for the first week of April. And then if I have a good first week and build a cushion, keep it going from there. What I don't want to do, if possible, is go down ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 next week and then start April in the hole. It's a new month. So even though I wasn't able to recoup all of my losses um, you know, from this drawdown that I had here in, um, you know, the last, whatever, the last, uh, three weeks, um, we start a new month. So, you know, I kind of feel like when we've got a new month, I'm able to kind of reset. Uh, so April is going to stand all by itself, right? So if I make 30,000 in April, will my account only be 15,000 above its all time high. Yes, but I'm not going to think about it like that. I'm going to think, hey, April was a good month. I'm up 30 grand or I'm up 50 grand or whatever it is. So, yeah, kind of um, excited that I'm putting March behind me, but I want to take some of the lessons from the month of March and apply them uh, moving forward. Also, uh, something I noticed for days and times, um, you know, those losing trades in the afternoon and a couple losing trades that were really early. So I have a window, uh, you know, 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. approximately. And I don't tend to do well when I trade outside that window. I don't think, let's see, March. I did get a couple afternoon trades in March. Um, but yeah, same same story though, right? So, you know, that's the window. So again, if I looked at a student, I would say, mm, let's let's lean in on your window where you're doing well. And to be honest, after 10 a.m., you know, you've got profit, but you're net negative when you go all the way till 2. So you w- I would have been better off if I stopped at 10 a.m. every single day this month. Um, even though I would have lost out and missed out on these winners, it would have saved me these losers. That's the reality. Now knowing I have this tendency, maybe a easier, the one solution would be just to stop at 10. But knowing that I have this pattern, maybe a solution to try to trade during this period of time without incurring these types of losses would be to reduce my share size. So I continue trading, but scale down a little bit. Again, that's very hard because I train myself when it's hot to do the exact opposite, to increase my risk and to trade even more aggressively. And I think in total, you know, when we look at all of my profit in total, that certainly paid off, right? $12.6 million. So it's not wrong, but you have to be able to adapt to different market conditions. And the market right now is not the same as it was during some of the years where I did incredibly well. So I've got to be a little bit more defensive, uh, at least until we see some more momentum. But hey, we did have good momentum, I suppose, these last couple of days. I just... Um, you know, it, it just, it wasn't, I wasn't able to have big green days and finish at that level because I don't know, maybe, maybe I just, just was over trading, but anyways, that's it for me. Uh, thank you guys for tuning into this recap. I hope you hit the thumbs up. I hope you're subscribed to the channel and I'll remind you as always that trading is risky. My results aren't typical. So manage your risk, take it slow. And I'll see you back here on April. Well, on Monday, whatever the day that is, uh, markets close tomorrow for good Friday. So I'll see you on Monday.